Welcome back, everybody. Today we'll be doing another Bible message. Uh, and it's been a while since I did one. It was the end of December, the last one I did. And that was ending the 12 weeks of Bible study every week for the to end of the year. But today we're going to get back to them starting uh, with like monthly Bible study. So unless God tells me to do something uh, more than once a month or gives me something to give to y'all, I'm going to keep doing them once a month, probably towards the end of the month, every month. So um, guys, today it's about the message that God has given me is being fully committed to him. Okay. So if you want the benefits of living for God, if you want to make it to heaven, if you want God to be your everything, fully committed is what you need to be to him. So if you look at people in the Bible, the ones that were fully committed to him are the ones that were blessed the most, the ones that God came through when things were tough, when they needed something from God because they were fully committed, that's when God came through for them, okay? So let's get started with 2 Chronicles 16 and 9. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. Herein thou hast done foolishly, therefore henceforth thou shalt have wars, okay? So, fully committed. The eyes of the Lord are scanning the earth, this uh, looking for someone to show himself strong on their behalf. God wants to show himself strong on your behalf, but he's looking. Who is he going to look for, for? What criteria is he searching out? A perfect heart? A person that's fully committed to him. We're not going to be perfect. We're not. But is your heart perfect? We're all human. We're all going to make mistakes. But in order to keep your heart perfect, you have to repent of your sins. Be baptized in Jesus' name. Get filled with the Holy Ghost because it's the Holy Ghost inside of you that helps you do things right, helps you stay with a repentant heart. We cannot live right, people, without the Holy Ghost, okay? Now, uh, looking at 2 Chronicles 3, uh, 31 and 21 is where we'll go right now. 31 and 21. And and in every work that he began in the service of the house of God and in the law and the commandments to seek God, he did it with all his heart and he prospered. Talking about King Hezekiah, we're going to get more about him. Um, so let's go to 2 Chronicles 29 and 3. 29 and 3. He, in the first year of his reign, in the first month, opened the doors of the house of the Lord and repaired them. Okay, so we're going to talk about this. So when we have issues in our life, and look, this is talking about in the world, okay? First things first, we have to open the doors of the church. We have to get back to praying. We are, as a as a people, we have to get back to uh, living for God at the best, utmost capacity as we can. Right now, we live for too many things other than the other than God. Think about it. What are you doing when the doors of the church are open? Are you in church worshiping God? Are you praying? Are you fasting? What are you doing to have yourself committed to Jesus Christ? Okay, we have to. I'm not trying to condemn anybody. If you're doing things that you shouldn't be doing, or if you're doing any things that isn't what you know isn't making you part of being in church. I'm just trying to bring the question up, bring the thought up. This is self-thought, self-meditation on what am I doing? Am I doing stuff that's pleasing to God? If not, I think I need to take an inward look at myself and think what should I do in order to make sure what I'm doing pleases Jesus, okay? So first things first, open the doors of the church. You have to have some expectancy of what God is going to do in your life. You got to be on the edge of your seat when that pastor is up there preaching the word, paying attention to what in the world does God want me to hear? You need to be listening for the voice of God because it's it's where you get your power from. Let's go to Luke 10 and 19. Luke 10, 19. Let's see, 10, 19. Behold, I give unto you power and to to. Let me say this again. Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and all over the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. You understand that? God will give you power, but you have to be fully committed to him. All right, so Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. 
So Luke is the writer of Acts as well. Um, after you've read the book of Luke and Acts, you've read half of the New Testament. So Acts 1 and 8, according to my notes. But ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Once you receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, when Jesus fills you with his spirit, you have power, okay? The devil can't do nothing to you. The world can't do nothing to you. It don't matter who you are, how poor you are, the color of your skin. It does not matter. Jesus does not care about anything except your attitude, your heart. And God doesn't look at skin color. He does not look at a level of class. He does not look at smarts. He does not look at abilities. God looks at your availability. He looks at your attitude towards life. He looks at, hey, I'm going to live for you no matter what, Jesus. I don't care if I have an arm chopped off or if I'm disabled in a certain way. What kind of attitude are you going to have Says that says, I'm going to live for you no matter what, Jesus. I'm going to be fully committed. Being fully committed is an attitude thing. It's, I'm going to be looking at the God, at God. I'm going to keep my eyes, like David said, I'm going to keep lifting my eyes up, up into the hills. That's where my help comes from. My help comes from the Lord who is the maker of heaven and earth. It doesn't matter what comes my way. I'm going to look up towards God and be fully committed to him. So the Holy Ghost is what brings you power. And we'll go to Amos uh, chapter 3, verse 7. Amos is a minor prophet from the Old Testament. And I love the book of Amos because there are so many things that Amos prophesied happened 400 years later. So surely the Lord God will do nothing but revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. Okay, so you see this is more of revealing some of that. Uh, like in Luke, you get your power once you receive the Holy Ghost. Okay, so the secret is the Holy Ghost, guys. It is the Holy Ghost. So let's go. Uh, let's talk about. Let's see. Let's look at my notes and talk about um, King Uzziah down to Hezekiah. So King Uzziah, he went to church, but he, because of his sin and because of the things he did not do correctly, he ended up being a leper. He was cursed with leprosy, okay? And when he died, his son Jotham, he said, my dad was in church and he become a leper. I'm not gonna go to church because if, if my dad become a leper while he was in church, there ain't no reason for me to be in church. And Ahaz, Jotham's son, when he stepped into power, said, my grandfather was a leper in church. My daddy never went to church. Why do we even need the doors of the church open? And Ahaz closed the doors of the church and Ahaz also became a baby killer, okay? So that's that's not good. That is not good. It's terrible to kill babies. I mean, it's terrible to commit murder to begin with, but to step so low is just appalling, okay? So if you look at it, each generation, backslid even further. Uzziah was a leper. Jotham stopped going to church. Ahaz closed the doors. But King Hezekiah, he re-implemented sacrificial offerings. He re reconstituted worship. He opened the doors of the church because he said, wow, uh, I see what the past generation's done. I don't want to be like them. I want to make it to heaven. We're opening up the church because we're going to be a blessed people. We're going back to the old ways on how all these things were good when we, when the people of God were going to church, when the door of the church were opening. There were healings that took place. There were miracles. God fought our battles for us when we were fully committed to them. So the previous gen three generations, they were less committed and less committed and less committed to where they weren't committed to God at all. But Hezekiah said, uh-uh, not on my watch. We are reinstituting the things of God. And then if we go to 2 Chronicles 30 and 20, we will see here, 2 Chronicles 30 and 20, we are going to see here. Okay. And the Lord hearkened unto Hezekiah and healed the people. Okay. So 
with all the stuff we have going on in the world today, between depression, COVID, anything you can imagine, of, inflation, Russia and Ukraine, all the stuff that's going on in the world that's negative, guys, we need some positive stuff. And if we want to hear that, we have to hearken unto Jesus and he will hearken unto us and he will heal, heal our people, heal our land. So um, if we look at 32 and uh, 32 and 1 of Second Chronicles, after these things and establishment thereof, Sennacherib king of Assyria came and entered Judah and encamped against the fenced cities and thought to win them for himself. Okay. So this king invaded a holy church. As long as Uzziah, Jotham, and Ahaz were in charge, the devil could care a less about that city because the devil knew he had that city bound for hell. But now that Hezekiah is on the move and in the right direction, all hell breaks loose. So just because you go back to church, just because you start living for God and are fully committed does not mean things are going to be easy. Because guess what? When you're fully committed to God and doing what you're supposed to do, that's when all hell is going to break loose because the devil is going to fight you to get you back to where you were. He wants you to he wants to fight you because he wants you to not live for God. So hell's going to break loose. But let's look at this other stuff, okay? Let me pull my notes back up. Attacks on family, finances, health issues are spirits of infirmities that comes from the devil himself. But Isaiah 54 and 17 says, No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment shall, uh, thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. So, like I said, hell's going to break loose when you start living for God. But Jesus is there. You will be blessed when you take on hell itself, and God is going to make sure you're strong. Jesus never promised that the weapon won't be formed against you, but he promised that it would not prosper. Yes, you might take some blows. Yes, you might take some hits to the face and the gut. Things are going to happen, but you will win, and that's what's called fighting the good fight. <laughs> Nehemiah 6 and 9 said, Oh God, strengthen my hands. 2 Chronicles 32, 7-8 more with good than with bad there's an arm of flesh and ours is the arm of god so then if you look at the one of the next verses second chronicles uh hopefully my note my notes are a little off sorry guys they're zoomed in a little bit more uh but second chronicles 31 and 32 and 21 says and the lord sent an angel which cut off the almighty men of valor let's see if i can do this a little better of valor and the leaders and captains in the camp of king of Assyria. So he returned with shame of his face on his own land. And when he was come into the house of God, they that came forth on his bowels slew him with the sword. So God took care of that king for Hezekiah. Second Chronicles 32 and 30. Gihon Springs created the pool of Siloam. Isaiah 22 and 9. Breaches are God's way to make us aware of problems that need solving in order for future miracles. Yeah, duh. Okay, in John 9 and 7, And said unto him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation. He went his way, therefore, and washed and came sing. So, God is going to protect you. He is going to do everything he said he would do. But you have to be fully committed. The guy in the pool of Siloam, what was it 30 years he didn't get healed because he wasn't committed but when he got committed and jesus said go wash in the pool hey that's that's what happened it worked okay so guys uh please be fully committed to the lord he will take care of everything for you i promise okay so thanks for watching guys i hope this was helpful i really do so guys until next month, we'll have another Bible study. We're going to continue with the normal content. So guys, thanks for watching and God bless you.